Chapter 11 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 11 The Heroine Has Awakened, 2, Translator Shino J. Gu Chu was silently cheering Manchi on. Mommy, your IQ is finally up again. Ju Manchi had always been approachable, gentle and patient. However, Gu Chu was her bottom line. Once she found out who was unfavorable to Gu Chu, she would immediately come to her senses and protect her daughter at all costs. Well, let me think about it. Gu Chu tilted her small head, her face full of innocence. Aunt also said that Chu Chu is a b asterisk starred. Chu Chu's existence will ruin the Zhao family's plan. Well, Mama, what is the meaning of a b asterisk starred? Can it be eaten? Gu Chu was good at adding oil to the fire. What bad intentions could a five-year-old child have? As expected, the gentleness on Gu Manchi's face gradually disappeared. She had a rare gloomy face. Chu Chu, be good. Go to sleep first. Mommy won't let anyone hurt you. Okay, Chu Chu is so sleepy. Chu Chu, go to sleep first. Mommy has to go to sleep early too. As she said that, Gu Chu raised her chin and kissed Gu Manchi's face. Then, she obediently retreated into the bed, closed her eyes, and fell asleep. Children always slept fast and had nothing to worry about. To Noel.N on the other hand, Gu Manchi could not sleep for a long time. Her mind kept replaying the events that happened recently. As a mother, she was tough and gentle like water. However, she also had her own principles and taboos. On the other side, Tang Chuanxiu was having supper with Zhao Manxi. The mother and daughter were very happy together. Tang Chuanxiu was full of ambition. She spent the whole afternoon to finally convince Gu Manxi to send her child to kindergarten. This also made Gu Manxi firmly believe in the Zhao family. Next, she only needed to arrange a meeting between Gu Manchi and Director Li, and the marriage would be finalized. The Li family has quite a reputation in the capital. If they could build a relationship with the Li family, the Zhao family's business would be thriving. The more Tang Chuanxiu thought about it, the more excited she became. She quickly opened her phone and sent Director Li a WeChat message. Tang Chuanxiu Director Li, my eldest daughter Manchi has just returned to the country. Why don't I arrange for my eldest daughter to meet you? Li Yud. President Tang, why haven't I heard that you have an eldest daughter before? But as for Manchi, I like her very much. Tang Chunxiu. President Li, my Manchi is only 18 years old. She's too young. My eldest daughter is 24 years old this year. I'll send you a photo. You'll definitely like her. As she typed, Tang Chuanxiu found Gu Manchi's photo and sent it over. Li Yud opened the photo to take a look, and his eyes immediately went wide. The woman in the photo had soft eyebrows, an oval face, and smooth long hair. Her gentle temperament, which could not be hidden, instantly touched Director Li's heart. So similar. They look so similar. Li Yud touched his chin, and his eyes were filled with greed. Li Yud had once crazily pursued a female celebrity in the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, the power behind that female celebrity was too great, and he could not get her for a long time. Later, the female celebrity retired, and Li Yud could no longer find her. Later, Li Yud met Zhao Manxi, the daughter of the Zhao family, at a cocktail party. Zhao Manxi and that female celebrity looked extremely familiar, which made Li Yud's heart itch. He planned to marry Zhao Manxi. The Li family had a big business, and the Zhao family would not reject such a good thing. Unexpectedly, Tang Chuanxiu's eldest daughter looked more like that female celebrity, and they were practically exactly the same. Li Yud President Tang, I want to marry your eldest daughter. Don't worry, we will be in. Laws in the future. I will take care of the in.laws in business. I have time this Saturday. You arrange for me to meet her. Tang Chunxiu. Okay, 
I will arrange it now. From now on, we will be family. Tang Chuanxiu put down her phone and took the tea from Zhao Manxi. Her eyes were shining with excitement. Tang Chuanxiu sipped two mouthfuls of tea, done. Chapter 12 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 12 I am an actress, one, translator. Shinoje Zhao Mansi tilted her head and held her teacup, that's more like it. I don't want to marry Li Yud. He's old, ugly, fat, and lecherous. He's only suitable for my sister. She was a rich girl with a noble status. In the future, she would definitely marry a young, promising, handsome, and good husband. The marriage was about to get finalized and Tang Chuanxiu was in a good mood. Mansi, you're also of the right age. You can consider marriage. Mom has observed that the Cheng family in the capital is actually quite good. Mom, I don't want to marry into the Qing family. Zhao Mansi pouted and acted coquettishly, the Qing family is rich and powerful. Their businesses are all over the world. But CEO Cheng is already in his 40s and has a 15-year-old son at home. He has a lot of women outside. I don't want to marry into the Qing family and become a stepmother. In the capital, the Qing family was the most powerful family. The Qing family had a big business. Their businesses were all over esports, technology, daily life, and many other industries. The current head of the Qing family was in his 40s. He was still as energetic as ever, and he had many lovers all over the world. Many socialites wanted to marry into his family. However, the internal relationship of the Qing family was very complicated. CEO Cheng had many illegitimate children, and they were all busy fighting over property. A year ago, the only son that CEO Cheng approved of, Cheng Qi, was kidnapped by a certain illegitimate son and almost died. Then, which young master did my precious daughter take a fancy to? Tang Chuanxiu said with a smile, her eyes filled with unconcealable gentleness. Her love was only for her youngest daughter, Zhao Manxi. She was her only precious treasure. A blush flashed across Zhao Manxi's pretty face. Blushing, she said, Mom, I like Song Chen. The last time I went to a dinner party, Song Chen was even peeping at me. Zhao Manxi clearly remembered that time at the dinner party where the rich and powerful gathered. The famous entertainment tycoon, Song Chen, pulled her arm. Song Chen stared at her in astonishment. After a long while, he said, Sorry, I mistook you for someone else. It was the first time Zhao Manxi had come into close contact with Song Chen. In the past, she had only heard of Song Chen's reputation through the conversations of her best friends. Entertainment tycoon, billionaire, single, rich, handsome. Moreover, even though he had many beautiful female celebrities under him, Song Chen did not have any scandals. Such a perfect man made Zhao Manxi's heart flutter. If she wanted to marry, she would only marry Song Chen. Song Chen CEO Song, not bad. Tang Chuanxiu nodded. She had heard of CEO Song's reputation before. This was a person who was worthy. Her daughter had outstanding looks and was very well educated. Any man would be attracted to her. Tang Chuanxiu began to plan in her heart delightfully. She had to think of a way to get the two to meet. Song Chen was much better than the greasy director Li. The next day, Friday. Manxi, today, I'll take Chu Chu to the kindergarten to take a look. You accompany your father to the company to learn about the Zhao family's business. At the breakfast table, Tang Chuanxiu reminded Gu Manxi, in a few days, I'll give you a portion of the shares of the Zhao family. Tang Chuanxiu used the shares as bait in order to gain Gu Manxi's trust. Gu Manxi sat in front of the dining table absent-mindedly. She looked deeply at her mother and forced a smile. Mom, I'll accompany Chu Chu to the kindergarten today. Manchi, leave Chu Chu to me. I'll take Chu Chu to familiarize her with the environment today, Tang Chuanxiu interrupted Gu Manchi, Mom likes children and wants to spend more time with Chu Chu. 
By the way, mom will take you to meet your relatives tomorrow. Remember to dress well. Chapter 13 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 13 I am an actress, too, translator. Shino J. Gumanshi did not say a word. Last night, she looked up the information about the Sodot called Royal Kindergarten and seriously considered the events which had been happening recently. She gradually understood that this might be a trap. She was kind, but not stupid. Mom, I happen to be free today. I can go to the kindergarten with Chu Chu. The door opened and Zhao Yan, who was dressed neatly in casual clothes, walked in. He was tall, and his eyes were cold and stern. He looked quite dignified. Tang Chuanxiu was stunned and quickly stood up. Yen, you actually took the initiative to come home. No matter how much I urged you in the past, you refused to stay at home. Come and have some breakfast. Zhao Yen stopped staying at home at a young age. He rented an apartment near the company. It was convenient for him to work, and it was also convenient for him to meet that person. Throughout the year, Zhao Yen could rarely come back home. When he returned home yesterday, he mainly wanted to see his sister who had been lost for 18 years. Zhao Yen still had some kinship with Gu Manxi. He still remembered that when he was very young, his sister would always chase after him and call him brother non dot stop. When he saw the five dot year dot old little Chu Chu yesterday who was cute and lively, Zhao Yen felt a tenderness in his heart. Mom, Chu Chu hasn't woken up yet. Zhao Yen sat down at the dining table. He had returned to the Zhao residence today and wanted to accompany her to visit the kindergarten. Zhao Yen felt uneasy and felt that things were not that simple. Tang Chuanxiu's eyes flickered. She cannot have Zhao Yen follow her to check out the kindergarten, so she said, Chu Chu is still upstairs. I'll get Mansi to call her. Before she could finish her sentence, a loud clanging sound suddenly came from upstairs. Then, Gu Chu burst into tears. Gu Manchi's expression suddenly changed, and she could not control her legs as she rushed upstairs. Chu Chu. Zhao Yan's gaze also changed. He glanced at his mother, turned around, and followed Gu Manchi upstairs. In the pink princess room, the floor was covered with sparkling glass shards, and the air was filled with the smell of fresh blood. Poor little Gu Chu was on the ground. Red beads of blood appeared on her white feet, and she was wailing helplessly. Beside Gu Chu stood Zhao Manxi, whose face was full of shock. When Gu Manxi saw this scene, her eyes almost went black, and her heart felt like it was in her throat. Ignoring the glass shards on the floor, she hurriedly ran over and picked Gu Chu up. Chu Chu, don't be afraid. Mommy will take you to the doctor. Gu Chu wailed loudly. Her eyes were red as she hugged Gu Manchi's neck. Boo-hoo, what's going on? Zhao Yen caught up. When he saw the blood on the ground, his eyes suddenly turned cold as he questioned his sister, Zhao Manxi. Zhao Manxi was also quite helpless. She pretended to be kind and asked Gu Chu to get up. In the end, this little girl refused to get up. She wouldn't get up unless Manxi carried her. There was nothing she could do. Zhao Manxi could only suppress the impatience and disgust in her heart. She pretended to be a good aunt and bent down to pick up Gu Chu who was lying on the bed. However, just as she carried her, Zhao Manxi's arm suddenly felt a strange pain. She subconsciously let go. Out of nowhere, the vase beside the bed fell to the ground, and Gu Chu fell from her arms as well. Things happened too quickly. Before Zhao Manxi could react, the little girl had already started to cry loudly. I did I don't know either. Faced with her brother's questioning, Zhao Manxi was afraid of being misunderstood. Brother. This vase suddenly fell. Zhao Yan's face was cold. Beside him, Gu Chu, who was crying in his mother's arms, said sobbingly, Uncle, uncle. It's not auntie's fault. It's Chu Chu's fault. It might be Chu Chu's fault, Zhao Mansi lowered her head slightly. 
Her eyes instantly turned slightly red and she looked guilty. She apologized softly, but it's also my fault for not taking good care of her. Chapter 14 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 14 I am an actress, 3, translator. Shinoje Zhao Yen glanced at Zhao Mansi and then turned to look at Gu Chu, who was sobbing non-stop. The five-year-old baby's red eyes were actually filled with unconcealable fear. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she did not dare to look at Zhao Mansi, her aunt. It was obvious that she was afraid of something. She stubbornly bit the corner of her pink lips and hugged Gu Manshi's neck tightly, as if she only felt safe in her mother's arms. Zhao Yan's heart sank to the bottom. He knew that Zhao Manshi had something to do with Chu Chu's injury. Manshi, the family doctor hasn't come to work yet, Zhao Yan said. Glass may be stuck in Chu Chu's foot. I'll drive you to the nearby hospital. Gu Manshi's fingers were shaking, her eyes were red, and her face was ashen. Sorry to trouble you, big brother. Zhao Yan brought Gu Manshi and her daughter and quickly drove to the nearby hospital. Tang Chuanxiu, who had heard the news, went upstairs and saw the mess in the room. Tang Chuanxiu said rather disapprovingly, Mansi, even if you can't stand this little bastard, there will be plenty of opportunities to teach her a lesson in the future. Manshi doesn't trust us very much right now. If you do this, she will be suspicious, and your brother and your father will be dissatisfied. Obviously, Tang Chuanxiu knew her daughter the best. Zhao Mansi felt really wrong this time. She stomped her feet and said angrily, Mom, it really was an accident this time. I picked her up, but I don't know why she. Ugh, I really can't explain it clearly. Zhao Mansi recalled the scene at that time. It seemed like she really picked up the child and dropped her to the ground. Coincidentally, the glass bottle had also fallen to the ground. However, she really had no intention of harming the child. She would not go so far as to lay her hands on a child. All right, I'll get someone to tidy up the room. Tang Chuanxiu sighed. When your sister comes back, apologize to her properly. You must be sincere. Zhao Mansi nodded unwillingly. All right. On the other side, Zhao Yan drove to the hospital. Gu Chu's feet were really hurting. In order to let her innocent mother see the true colors of the Zhao family, she had made huge sacrifices. Mommy, Chu Chu's feet hurt. Gu Chu nestled in Gu Manchi's arms with tears in her eyes. The wounds on her feet were still bleeding. No one dared to stop the bleeding because they were worried that there were glass shards inside. Drops of bright red blood pierced Gu Manchi's eyes. Gu Manchi's tears almost fell. Big brother, please drive faster. Gu Manchi's voice was hoarse, and her fingers were trembling. Zhao Yan drove in front and said calmly, we'll be there in a few minutes. After a pause, Zhao Yan suddenly asked, Chu Chu, tell uncle, did you really hurt yourself by accident? As Zhao Yan spoke, his eyes kept looking at the rearview mirror. He saw Gu Chu Chu's small body trembling, and tears appeared in her black eyes. She said with tears in her eyes, it. It was Chu Chu who hurt herself by accident. Sob. It has nothing to do with auntie. Gu Chu knew that her uncle was smarter and more observant. Now, she, a weak five-year-old child, was a pitiful victim with secrets. Uncle, ask a few more questions. I can still keep going. In the original novel, Zhao Mansi was good at pretending to be weak and pitiful. Perhaps she was jealous that the female protagonist, Gu Manshi, was better looking than her, or perhaps there were other reasons. In short, Zhao Mansi had repeatedly framed Gu Manshi in the original novel. Gu Manshi, the silly, sweet protagonist of the novel, had been harmed time and time again, yet she had not discovered her sister's hypocrisy and treated Zhao Mansi as her own sister. Chu Chu, tell uncle the truth. Don't be afraid. Zhao Yan gripped the steering wheel tightly and said in a low voice, Uncle will take care of you. 
Gu Manshi raised her head and frowned slightly. Big brother. What do you mean? Chapter 15 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 15 Born to be an actress translator Shino J through the rearview mirror, Zhao Yan looked at his sister, whom he had not seen for 18 years. In Zhao Yan's impression, Gu Manshi had always been pure and kind. Even if she was bullied, she would not tell her family. After so many years, her gentle personality had not changed. Zhao Yan sighed slightly. A strong sense of responsibility welled up in his heart. Zhao Yan said, Chu Chu, tell the truth. Otherwise, your mother will be worried. Gu Chu sobbed. Tears flowed down from her wet eyes. She seemed to be hesitating before she suddenly burst into tears. Gu Chu swore in her heart that she had never cried in her previous life. Today, she had cried all the tears she could possibly have. Mom, if you don't wake up, I really have no other choice. She opened her mouth as she cried out loud. As she cried, she said intermittently, Chu Chu doesn't dare to say it. Chu Chu. Boo hoo. If Chu Chu says it, Mommy won't like Chu Chu anymore. Boo hoo. Mommy, Chu Chu isn't a bastard. Mama isn't a slut either. Boo hoo. Chu Chu doesn't want to be separated from Mommy, Chu Chu doesn't want a new father. Andy said I was dirty. Boo hoo, and even threw Chu Chu to the ground. Boo hoo. Gu Chu Chu's throat was sore from crying, and her acting skills reached an all dot time high. Gu Manshi was completely stunned on the spot, and the blood in her body seemed to freeze instantly. Bastard. Slut. New father. In just three short words, she could roughly make out the truth of the matter. The Zhao family did not welcome Gu Manchi's return as they did on the surface. They looked down on Gu Manchi and Gu Chu from the bottom of their hearts. They were only putting on a show for something. Dot Gu Manchi was so angry that she was trembling. Zhao Yan said, Don't be rash. Let's send Chu Chu to the hospital first. We'll discuss the other matters slowly. Zhao Yan was calmer in the end. He handled things better than Manchi. Gu Manchi asked in a hoarse voice, Brother, are you with Tang Chuanxiu and the others? This time, Gu Manchi did not call Tang Chuanxiu mom, but directly called her by her name. Zhao Yan turned the steering wheel and the deep blue luxury car drove into the hospital parking lot. I won't harm you. Gu Manchi fell silent. After entering the hospital, the doctor quickly came to check on Gu Chu. He took out two pieces of blood dot stained glass from the child's feet. Gu Chu was in so much pain that tears welled up in her eyes, but she did not cry out. She looked exceptionally stubborn. As parents, you should pay more attention to your child. The middle dot aged doctor in the white coat had a serious look on his face. What a beautiful child. If the glass hurts her eyes and her face is disfigured, her life will be ruined. Gu Manshi thanked him with a lump in her throat. Gu Chu cried all the way and was extremely tired. Her soul was a top-notch hacker at the age of 20. She could fight, fight, rip people off, flirt with girls and men. However, now that she was reborn in the body of a five-year-old child, her physique had also become a child's easy dot to dot sleep physique. She grabbed her mother's hand and fell into a deep sleep. In the ward, Gu Manshi and Zhao Yan were silent for a long time. Big brother, I did I check the information about the royal kindergarten last night, Gu Manshi finally opened her mouth. Her beautiful face was filled with unease, Tang Chuanxiu said that it is the best kindergarten in the capital. However, the information I checked shows that this is the worst kindergarten in the capital. It was even worse than her previous kindergarten. If she hadn't been injured today, she would have been sent to this kindergarten by Tang Chuanxiu. Gu Manchi calmly questioned, Your family clearly looked down on me, so why did you bring me back? To think that I thought I still had family to rely on in this world. 
Zhao Yan looked at the sleeping Gu Chu on the hospital bed. Gu Chu curled up in a ball and tear streak still stained her little face. Chapter 16 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 16 The father appeared, one, translator. Shinoje Zhao Yen found it hard to imagine that the Zhao family would lay their hands on a cute five-dot-year-dot-old child. Don't go back to the Zhao family for the time being, Zhao Yen suggested. I have a lot of empty rooms in my apartment. You and Chu Chu can stay there for now. Gu Manshi caressed Chu Chu's face and her eyes were gloomy. Okay. Gu Manshi planned to return to the town they previously lived in when Chu Chu's foot had almost recovered. Gu Manshi worked in the town's hospital. Although her income was low, it was enough for her to support Gu Chu. The small town was peaceful, without the scheming of the big cities. Beep beep. Gu Manshi's phone rang. Gu Manshi looked at the caller ID and raised her head. Tang Chunxiu. Zhao Yan made a prompt decision. Manshi, don't fall out with my mother for now. The Zhao family still has power in the capital. If you fall out, it won't be good for you and Chu Chu to escape unscathed. Gu Manshi nodded and answered the call. On the other end of the phone, Tang Chunxiu's anxious voice sounded. Manshi, how is Chu Chu? Oh God, it's all mother's fault for being careless and not putting carpets in the room. Mother has already gotten the servants to clean the room and put carpets on it. What a gentle and considerate mother. However, Gu Manshi was no longer as gullible as she was in the beginning. As long as it was related to Chu Chu, Gu Manshi was more clear dot headed than anyone else. Gu Manshi tried her best to sound as calm as possible and said gently, Chu Chu's feet were pierced by a few glass shards. The doctor said that she can't walk for the time being. I plan to let Chu Chu stay in the hospital today. That. That's fine. Take good care of the child. Don't exhaust yourself. Tang Chuan Xiu said lovingly, I'll reschedule the appointment with the principal of Chu Chu's kindergarten. There's one more thing. When the relatives heard that you're back, they were all very happy. Tomorrow, mom will bring you to meet the relatives. Gu Manshi said lightly, let's talk about it tomorrow. I'll take care of Chu Chu first, Dot Tang Chuan Xiu rambled on and said a lot of concerned words. Gu Manshi's face was expressionless. She listened quietly and occasionally said a few words. After hanging up the phone, Tang Chuanxiu's smile disappeared. She vaguely realized that Gu Manxi seemed to have noticed something. Tang Chuanxiu did not dare to delay any longer. She hurriedly sent a message to Director Li to agree on the time and place for the meeting tomorrow. She wanted to make the marriage between the Li family and the Zhao family as soon as possible. As for Gu Chu, this five-dot-year-dot-old little bastard, there were plenty of opportunities to deal with her again. That afternoon, Zhao Mansi brought toys and fruits to the hospital. She lowered herself and apologized to Gu Chu. Chu Chu, it's all my fault. I should have caught you. Gu Chu's small body tensed up like a frightened quail. She trembled as she huddled in her mother's arms and muttered, Thank you, Auntie. Chu Chu's feet don't hurt at all. Really? Zhao Mansi did not notice Gu Chu's fear. She pretended to be concerned and asked Gu Chu a few questions. After that, she excused herself to go back to school and left. After Zhao Mansi left, Gu Chu raised her little head and said softly, Mommy. Chu Chu is afraid. Gu Chu admired her own acting skills. In her previous life, she only cared about hacking for money. With her looks and acting skills, she should have gone into the entertainment industry. She might even win a Lifetime Achievement Award for Best Actress. Gu Manshi hugged Chu Chu, her eyes slightly sour. Chu Chu is not afraid. When Chu Chu's foot is healed, Mommy will bring you back to town. Zhao Manshi did not really like hospitals, even though this hospital could be considered the best private hospital in the capital. She walked out of the ward, took out her perfume, and sprayed it on her hand in disgust. 
she touched that little bastard just now. It was really disgusting. As she was putting on her perfume and when she took a glance out of the corner of her eye, her eyes instantly lit up. She hurriedly adjusted her appearance, and a smile appeared on her exquisite and beautiful face. She greeted the man who was walking toward her, CEO Song, long time no see. Chapter 17 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 17 The father appeared, too, translator. Shino J the man had handsome facial features, and the outline of his face looked like it was exquisitely sculpted by an artist. As he walked towards her, he had a natural domineering temperament. He was wearing an Italian high dot end suit that accentuated his height and long legs. He was extraordinarily handsome. This man was the famous CEO Song Chen of the capital, the man who controlled more than half of the entertainment industry's resources. Song Chen was talking to his assistant when he heard her. He raised his head slightly. He knew Zhao Manxi. They had met at the dinner party before. Seeing Zhao Manxi's familiar face, Song Chen stopped in his tracks and nodded at her. Zhao Manxi was ecstatic. Song Chen still remembered her. He even responded to her. Countless beautiful female celebrities and socialites had tried their best to get close to Song Chen, but all of them were coldly rejected by him. Song Chen wouldn't even spare them an extra glance. But today, Song Chen actually responded to her. He must really have a good impression of her. Zhao Manxi's face was slightly red as she lowered her head shyly. She was wearing a beautiful light yellow long dress today. Her long hair was tied up and her high heels wrapped around her ankles. It accentuated her gentleness and quiet temperament, attracting many people's gazes along the way. She knew that she was beautiful, so she added a kind character to herself in a subtle manner. My little niece is in the hospital. I like children a lot, so I came to the hospital to see her. Oh right, CEO Song, what are you doing at the hospital? Are you sick? Song Chen replied faintly, to see a friend. His gaze fell on Zhao Manxi's face, but he quickly moved away. They were similar. But in the end, it wasn't her. Song Chen didn't stay any longer and left with his assistant. Zhao Manxi stayed where she was until Song Chen's back was no longer in her line of sight. Only then did she reluctantly leave. Song Chen, who had a lot on his plate, came to the hospital today mainly to see a special friend. In the VIP ward, the room was pale and clean. The afternoon sun shone through the window frame, and a bunch of green tiger ear grass peeked out of the window. The pale young woman on the bed was looking out of the window. Her sickly face could not hide her quiet beauty. Brother Chen, you're here. Hearing the door, the woman smiled. Song Chen pushed the door open and entered. He sat down by the bedside and said, I heard from the doctor that you had another attack today. Ching Qin Yun shook her head and said helplessly, congenital heart disease, it can't be cured. It acts up every now and then. I get used to the pain. Song Chen said, you shouldn't have returned to the country back then. The medical environment overseas is more suitable for recuperating. But, I miss you very much. I don't want to be separated from you. Ching Qin Yun held up the glass of water. She looked at Song Chen's face and said, Brother Chen, you said you liked me in the past. Why? Can't you forget that woman? With his hidden worries exposed, Song Chen stood up and said calmly, Since you're fine, I'll leave now. After saying that, Song Chen left the ward without looking back. Ching Qing Yin's fingers holding the glass of water were trembling. She was unwilling to accept it. In the past, when my illness acts up, you would come to visit me day and night. Now, you would only stay in the ward for less than a minute and then leave. I was clearly your childhood sweetheart, I was the one who loved you the most. Dot but you actually got yourself a small celebrity in the entertainment industry. After I thought of a way to get rid of her, you still couldn't forget about her. Ching Qin Yun was unwilling to accept this. She gritted her teeth so hard that they creaked. 
She liked Song Chen, but she liked Song Chen's wealth and power even more. Only by marrying Song Chen would she have the confidence to fight for the family property in the Qing family. Chapter 18 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 18 Uncle's Friend Translator Shino J the Cheng family was about to be taken down by that 15 year old brat. I have to think of a way, Cheng Qingyun muttered. Song Chen strode forward, feeling rather frustrated. Seeing two women who looked like her in a row today, his heart was far from as calm as it appeared on the surface. He really wanted to know where that woman had run off to. He had been looking for her for five whole years, but there had been no news of her. Song Chen, who was in a bad mood, passed by a children's ward. The door to the ward was open, and there was a little girl with injured feet inside. She was tugging at the doctor's sleeve, saying in a childish voice that she wanted to play with the computer. The little girl's chattering made Song Chen, who was in a bad mood, even more annoyed. He coldly glanced at this cute little girl. So noisy. He hated children. Song Chen brought his assistant and left the hospital quickly. Just as he left, Gu Manchi and Zhao Yan returned to the ward. Dot Gu Manchi looked at Gu Chu and shook her head slightly. Chu Chu, don't be silly. There aren't any computers in the hospital. Mommy will bring you to uncle's house. We'll stay at uncle's house tonight. Gu Chu raised her little head and asked innocently, does uncle have a computer at home? Of course, uncle has a lot of computers at home, Zhao Yan said. Chu Chu and mom will stay at uncle's house first, okay? Gu Chu put on a big smile and stretched out her two chubby hands. Chu Chu likes uncle. I want hugs. Gu Manxi and Zhao Yan laughed out loud. Gu Chu despised herself greatly in her heart. Why are you pretending to be cute? Why are you acting cute? That night, Zhao Yan drove to the Zhao residence and took Gu Chu and Gu Manxi's luggage. Tang Chuanxiu felt that something was wrong. Zhao Yan found an excuse to say that Chu Chu was frightened and did not want to return to the Zhao residence. Tang Chuanxiu had no choice but to give up. She had always disliked her eldest son. Zhao Yan was young, but his thoughts were always unpredictable. Tang Chuanxiu could not control this child. Sometimes when Tang Chuxiu spent time alone with Zhao Yan, she always felt that Zhao Yan seemed to know her secret, which made her uneasy. Wow, uncle's house is really beautiful. Gu Chu poked her little head out of her mother's arms and looked around curiously. This was a heartfelt emotion. Zhao Yan's apartment was decorated in a style as solemn and cold as his own character. The light gray color was low dot key and luxurious. It was completely different from the extravagant Zhao family. This was the style that Gu Chu liked. Cold and imposing. Manchi, you and Chu Chu will stay on the second floor. I've already asked someone to clean up the room. Zhao Yan carried the luggage to the second floor. You can stay as long as you want. Gu Chu saw the computer in the room. It had a very good system. Gu Chu liked it and immediately revealed a sweet smile. Thank you, uncle. Chu Chu likes uncle the most. It was shameful to act cute, but it was useful. Gu Chu glanced at a room on the second floor. The door was slightly open, and it was filled with Utraman models. Posters of One Piece, Crossfire, and League of Legends were plastered all over the walls, it was completely different from the cold decoration style of Zhao Yan's house. It was full of youth and vitality. Gu Chu blinked and asked curiously, Uncle, there's Ultraman in that room. Do you like Ultraman, Uncle? Zhao Yan saw the open room and walked over to close the door. This room belongs to a friend of mine. He stays here occasionally, Zhao Yan said, his usually cold self now with hints of gentleness and joy. Chapter 19 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 19 Weird Kindergarten Translator Shino J Obviously, this friend held an extremely important position in Zhao Yan's heart. 
Gu Chu cupped her chin and said slyly, friend. Oh, Chu Chu knows. It must be an ante, right? Gu Manxi smiled and said, Chu Chu, don't talk nonsense. Zhao Yan coughed slightly, neither admitting nor denying it. Gu Chu naturally knew that this was definitely the room that Zhao Yan had prepared for his first love. His first love was a popular talented gamer. He had more than 8 million fans on Weibo and an annual salary of tens of millions. He was quite famous in the Chinese e.sports circle. Gu Chu also knew that in the original novel, Zhao Yan's secret relationship with his first love was soon discovered by the Zhao family. The old dot fashion Tang Chuanxiu and Zhao Jing were burning with anger. They tried to sabotage the relationship and indirectly killed Zhao Yan's first love, causing Zhao Yan's personality to change drastically. That night, Gu Manxi and Gu Chu temporarily stayed in the apartment. Gu Chu's small feet were still wrapped in gauze, making it difficult for her to move. Gu Manxi's heart ached terribly, and she regretted coming to the capital even more. In a manner in the capital. Young master, young master, Miss Gu went to the central hospital today. The assistant opened the record book and reported Gu Manxi's condition to the young master. The man rested his chin on his hand and tapped the table with his right index finger. He said slowly, why? Did she cripple Zhao Manxi? The assistant was stunned, then shook his head violently. No, no. Miss Gu's child, Gu Chu, injured her feet. It seems that she was injured by Zhao Manxi. The man stopped tapping the table. Disbelief flashed in his eyes. Dot what? Not only did this woman not cripple Zhao Manxi, she couldn't even protect her own daughter. When did she become such a weakling? Based on his memory, she was always acting like she was the best person in the world. She would rather let the world down than have the world letting her down. She was cool, arrogant, and treacherous. She also liked to flirt. The man rubbed his chin. He could not figure it out, so he gave his orders, continue to follow them. Report to me if anything happens. Yes, young master. The assistant bowed his head respectfully and suddenly thought of something. Young master, Chen Kaiyuan seems to have popped up again recently. He might be planning to target you. The man said impatiently, get someone to give him a good beating and put him in the hospital. This bunch of incompetent bastards who like to cause trouble were really annoying. They should all be sent to the hospital's intensive care unit and stay there for a year and a half before they could be discharged. This way, they would not cause trouble all the time. The assistant was filled with respect. Yes, young master. Even though the young master was young, ever since he was kidnapped back then, the young master seemed to have changed into a different person. He was swift and decisive in his actions and did not drag his feet when he did things. He taught those disobedient fellows in the family a good lesson and they did not dare to say a word. The family had already tacitly acknowledged the young master as the successor. Only a few fellows were still trying to seize power. However, their powers were barely significant. Thinking of this, the assistant's admiration for the young master grew stronger and stronger. The next day, Gu Chu obediently stayed at home to recuperate. Zhao Yan was busy with his work. After Gu Manxi finished making lunch, she secretly went to the so dot called Royal Kindergarten, intending to find out what was going on. Gu Manxi took the subway for an hour and transferred two buses before finally arriving at the so. Called Royal Kindergarten mentioned by Tang Chuanxiu. Although Gu Manxi had mentally prepared herself before she came, she still couldn't help but gasp when she saw the kindergarten herself. This kindergarten was actually transformed from a dilapidated mental hospital. The high and broken walls were surrounded by a ring of electric wires. The surroundings were covered with weeds, and the stinking ditches at the corners of the walls were filled with leftovers. Flies were everywhere, and there was also a strange medicinal smell. Chapter 20 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 20 Mommy is Missing Translator 
Shino J. It was Saturday, and there was no one in the kindergarten. At first glance, it looked like a grave. There was no sign of the lively spirit of a kindergarten. Gu Manshi still had lingering fear in her heart. She felt that this was not just a simple kindergarten. The kindergarten was clearly full of problems, but it was still here. Perhaps there was an unshakable force behind it. Gu Manshi did not stay any longer. She secretly took a few photos and sent them to Zhao Yan. Zhao Yan had established his roots in the capital. He should be able to investigate some things. Gu Manshi returned the way she came. At the intersection not far from Zhao Yan's apartment, she was stopped by a car. The car window opened. Tang Chuenxiu's charming face was revealed. She gently called out to her, Manshi, I was still planning to look for you. I didn't expect to meet you at the intersection. Where did you go? I went to the hospital to get some medicine. Chu Chu's injury hasn't recovered yet. Gu Manshi didn't really want to chat with Tang Chuenxiu. She recalled Zhao Yan's advice to stay away from the Zhao family as long as she could. Tang Chuenxiu opened the car door and still had a kind look on her face. She gently held Gu Manshi's hand and tears instantly welled up in her eyes. Her voice was choked with sobs. It's all mom's fault for accidentally injuring Chu Chu. Manshi, don't blame mom. I I. I just want to make it up to you. Gu Manshi's expression was not very natural. She wanted to question about the kindergarten, but she really could not bring herself to say it. Tang Chuanxiu continued, the relatives of the family know that you're back, and they're extremely happy. Do you still remember your second uncle? When you were young, he doted on you the most. When he found out that you're back, he was so excited that he shed tears. He said that our ancestors have blessed our Zhao family. Tonight, your second uncle and the others are all here. You should at least meet them. Manshi, you are my daughter and I love you so much. Don't tell me you still doubt your mother. Gu Manshi's expression showed that she was moved. She was half dot persuaded by Tang Chuanxiu and half dot dragged into the car. The green light at the intersection turned red. In an instant, the traffic was heavy. Gu Chu rarely had the time to be alone. She hid in her room and played on her computer. Her fair fingers tapped on the keyboard. Lines of code appeared like flowing water, and firewalls were broken one by one. Gu Chu sat up straight. She no longer had the naivety and innocence of a five-year-old child. She was a king born silently in the darkness. No one noticed. Time flowed unconsciously. When the sunlight that spilt into the window was dyed golden, Gu Chu realized that it was already dusk. Gu Chu twisted her neck, stretched her muscles, and walked out of the room. Mommy, I'm hungry. I want to eat custard buns. Gu Manshi had personally gone to the suburbs to look for that kindergarten. At this time, she should have already come home. However, no one responded. The apartment was empty, and only Gu Chu's clear voice echoed. Gu Chu stopped in place for two seconds. Her expression suddenly changed, and she quickly took out her phone to call Gu Manshi. Beep, beep, beep. Her phone was turned off. Gu Chu slapped her forehead, she was speechless. What should I do when my mom's too stupid for her own good? Please give me a solution. According to the plot of the original novel, Gu Manshi was probably going to be deceived by the Zhao family and given to that greasy director Li. I thought that my mom would at least be on guard. Gu Chu hurriedly called Zhao Yan. Zhao Yan picked up the phone after 30 seconds. Chu Chu, uncle is still in a meeting. Uncle. Mommy is gone. Wah. Gu Chu didn't care whether he was in a meeting or not. She started to cry without saying a word. Her face was full of tears, and she was going crazy. If I wasn't a five-year-old child, I would have done everything to save her. Why did I have to be a five-year-old child? Other than crying and acting cute, 
I can't do anything else.